Well, you can stop tagging me. <laughs> I finally got my hands on them. These are the pastel oh, markers. So we're gonna dig right in and see. I feel like I had something else to end up to the end of that sentence and it just never came. They're so pretty, it looks like candy. All right, so I've been, along with you guys, begging Ahu to come out with some pastel markers. Their original set that I had did not have brush nibbed, but there was a wide range of like saturated and deep tones as well as pastel tones. So I got a lot of use out of that when I first got it. And since then, most of their sets don't really have anything pastels. And I'm pretty sure I've mentioned it in any video that I've like sort of reviewed or talked about Ahu markers that I just wish they had more pastels. Well, what is this? Oh, look at that. <laughs> anyway, inside your little bag of, I think it's 48 markers. Oh, there are 48 plus a colorless blender. Thank you for not making me count them. <laughs> so you get a zipper pouch with their logo on it. And then it comes with a protective sheet for your sketchbook if you don't want to ruin sketches on like the next page down. Because alcohol based markers, they bleed through the paper. You gotta have a decent cardstock, kind of like these. So they included some swatch sheets, which is really cool. They're small enough where you could probably keep them in your sketchbook. And there's one for each color. Oh, cool. I would recommend though, if you use a different kind of paper to swatch your markers on the paper that you tend to use a lot, because colors can vary from paper to paper and the way they absorb and stuff like that. Anyway, I'm gonna dig in and hope that these markers are very similar to their caps. I haven't watched any reviews or anything, but why don't we just grab one and uh, find it on this sheet. So we have RV030, which is light hot pink. So it's chisel on one side. It's like a fluorescent pastel, I would call it. So there's your uh, brush nib and your chisel. And just like the other brush markers, there is a gray piece of plastic that denotes the brush nib, which is the broad nib, as they call it. I like to call it a chisel, or whatever. Oh, these are, these do have a smell. It's kind of strong. I guess this is a review. I don't know. I plan on using them to draw something at some point. This is E380 or Ash Rose. I think Ash Rose is a color we already have. Or am I thinking of Copic? It is. E70. Why don't we just swatch it right here? Yeah, that's dried out. What the heck? Maybe I can just get like a little tiny bit. Okay. The one on the left is our Ohu Ash Rose, and the one on the right is the Copic Ash Rose. Still hard to compare because this obviously had a lot more ink. You can actually see that the Ash Rose from Ohu is actually a bit more saturated. I'm gonna go ahead and just swatch all these. I'm gonna try and keep all of the swatches to the left in case I have a corresponding Copic to kind of test out next to it. Let me go ahead and do that, starting with the yellows. Now, I usually like to mention Copic markers, they have a whole system to their coloring. Essentially, the Copic coloring system, the E denotes the hue, and then the first number, I believe, is saturation, and the second number is value. The Ohuos, however, the number I don't think really means anything. The higher the number, I have noticed, does mean the light of the pigment. And then the letters obviously represent the hue, so like YR should be yellow-red, I would think. So that's the extent that a Ohu labeling system provides. And then you obviously get a color name, which is nice. Oh, Lipstick Natural. That's one of my favorite Copics. Wait, <gasps> they're stealing their names, eh? Hmm. This is so cool. It's like the first time I feel like I've done an Ohu review and actually had a Copic marker kind of collection to compare them to. Okay, I want to swatch these. Oh, I think that's going to be very similar. Eh? The Who one's a lot redder, which I do prefer, but in a pinch, they're very similar. I like to use my earthy tones mostly for like skin tones, and like so far they're kind of not pleasant. I don't know. I'm not a fan of the earthies. I'm enjoying these, but I don't really like any of these earthies. Pale lilac! That I think is a Copic marker. Little name stealers. Let's see what the two pale lilacs look like. Okay, the Copic is much darker than the Ohu. Interesting. Hmm, I like that. What I really like and why I tend to recommend more pastel colors for a beginner is because Copic markers are something you can build up. So if I were to take the same exact color and layer over this, it would get darker. So having a lot more pastels in your toolbox is helpful because you can build up colors. Whereas once it's super dark, you can't lighten, you know? 
The cool thing about grays is you layer that on top of any of these color and it's instantly going to change the way it looks. So cool. <laughs> I love markers. <gasps> Look, it matches my nail. Oh, then we have the colorless blender. No real need to swatch that. It's basically just alcohol in there. So you can lighten tones a little bit. It just, it starts breaking down the pigment a lot. So it's not always the prettiest. It's better done as like texture. Sardonyx. Ooh, that's a color I use a lot of. Okay, that definitely looks nothing like my Sardonyx. Here it is. Color 21. Oh, it's actually more similar than I thought it was. Viola. Oh, I think I have a... I do. Let's see what they look like. There's the Ohu. Copic. All right, the Copic one's a lot deeper. Now you might think like, oh, when I'm comparing these that, like the Ohus are all much lighter than the Copics, but that's because Copics also offer colors with like a heck tons of zeros, which means it's very, very light. So they do have lighter colors. I'm just comparing them to the namesake. All right, we have four markers left. I feel like that just looks like a very fun color scheme. Not a lot of like contrast there, but it's just like the hues, you know? Robin's egg blue. I might have a Robin's egg. Never mind, scratch that. We have antique fuchsia. That's a cool name too. Even though it's probably stolen. Okay, I really like that. It's a nice like desaturated pastel purple. Red gray number three. Red gray number 12. Wait, why is red gray 11 lighter than red gray 3? Definitely using a different theme than I'm used to with Copics. And finally, we have pale blue and it goes right here. Oh, I'm using the brush, being crazy. So that is all of the markers swatched out. I am very happy with the pastel nature, I would say. Like these could be built up quite a bit without losing your line art. I don't know if I saw it on the website, but the pastel set is exclusively all brand new colors that are not in any of the previous collections, which is really, really cool. Cause then you don't have to worry about overlap. It's funny, way back in the day, when you'd first buy an Ohu marker set, the colors would change. You didn't know what colors you were gonna get. Anyway, I'm gonna grab my sketchbook. That was that for a transition. <laughs> but I think what we should try to do is just create some illustrations using just the pastel set to just kind of show you how you can use them. And we'll see what kind of contrast we can get with just these colors. Ooh, I really like the way these look. They're so pretty and pastel. Now that I've given them time, the two lipstick naturals look exactly the same. Gash Rose still hasn't gotten similar, but you can kind of see how the ink is breaking down that it means I kind of put too much down. This is not a marker sketchbook, by the way. I just use it because I don't care. <laughs> the papers you want to avoid is printer paper and watercolor paper. Printer paper because your ink will go straight through. Watercolor paper because it will absorb all the ink out of your marker before you even know it so the other thing i actually have is the ohu fine line drawing pen so it's the same brand and it was a whole set of fine liners which i really like and i've been using so we'll probably be using some of these with it this is the 1.0 size but other pens you can kind of use with alcohol based markers are a lot of ballpoint pens work really well if you don't feel like splurging i think it's best we start drawing something here i'm gonna grab what i like to use with my markers which is a cola race pencil this one is is the color purple. I just like to use a nice warm pink tone because if you like drawing people, it works really well behind skin tones. No matter what skin tone you use, it's gonna look nice because it's gonna just add warmth and liveliness. It doesn't look dead, kind of like some of these earth tones on here. I'm gonna take my colorized pencil and we'll just see what happens. I'll just start with a nice head and some body. I have a couple characters that I almost always use a hoo markers with and that's uh, Wheels, Dex, and Scoot. Three friends who like roller skating, skateboarding, and is that also called roller skating? <laughs> but I think we should probably try and draw someone else because they have like colors that I've already picked out for them. I want to use the new colors. I feel like this wants to be a mermaid. It's not really screaming legs to me. Ooh, I haven't drawn a mermaid in a while. Whoa, I skipped mermaid this year. Let's open the eyes a little more. Make it more fish-like, big eyes. Now I feel like what would a mermaid be without some kind of oceanic hair clip? Maybe a starfish. Bring this arm up a little more. I'm just trying to make it a little softer. Right now she's a very stiff. Move her hips a little. Pull the hair out from that clip, maybe. I keep the shapes kind of simple. Since I want to play around with color the most. Three ponytails, eh? When one just isn't enough. 
We'll follow the star shape down here maybe. Maybe one big one. <laughs> I don't know, try something different. Not super practical, but it's coverage. <laughs> a little seaweed wrapped somewhere for extra detail. Finish off these fingers a little more. All right. I feel like I could throw some color on this. Should I do line art first? One of the cool things about alcohol markers mixed with like a pole erases, you can kind of layer it on top or take like a kneaded eraser. Just roll it on there to lighten it up a smidge. And then you can add like a line art. Big fish eyes, I guess. Pastel markers work really well with like dark line arts because you have a lot of contrast there, but they also look really nice with colored um, fine liners. You do have to be a little bit careful with lighter markers because they can make more line arts bleed than others. Like a really deep color isn't going to lift if I take this, draw like a thin line, a thick line here as well. Wait for those to dry and we'll go over those with the markers and they might bleed. I probably should have tested this. I went to a smaller fine liner and now it's too small. If I had started with this, that would have been nice. More pearls on the bracelet. I much prefer the thinner line art for this, but let me test some markers on here. See if these liners bleed. Oh, not too bad. Okay, I think we're safe. All right, there we go. We got our little mermaid, but let's just throw in some colors looking at our swatches. I'm feeling purple because we use purple for our sketch. Maybe purple skin. What's the lightest we got? Maybe viola. It's kind of like a blue color. You can really tell how light it is when you see it next to just the black pen. And you know what? We can maybe use the more reddish purples for like blush. It's gonna be so fun. You can kind of see how it's lifting pencil. I love the way that looks. Just the way it creates texture and stuff. Okay, I want to move over to thistle maybe. Let's try that for blush using the brush nibs for this because you can kind of feather it out. You can see how you can layer the markers. Great shading with just the exact same marker we already layered it down with. What about something bluer like mauve? It's a little deeper. And then you can blend it out with the original color. And if the paper's still kind of wet, it'll do it itself. Oh, and by the way, the caps fit on the other end. Oh, especially if you put them on the right ones. Copic can't do that. Well, the Copic chows can, but the Copic sketches don't. Tail, one for each two-tone tail. I'm thinking pink for these two things, like this light pink is screaming at me, or the light hot pink. So whichever one I find first, which is light hot pink, congratulations. Might want to layer this one with like a gray to tone it down. We'll see. See, this is so highlightery to me. Because our skin is purple, I feel like it's fine, but interesting. I like the idea of this light blue. It's kind of desaturated. Let's try that. And if it's not desaturated enough, you can layer it over it with a gray. And if you work fast, you can kind of avoid streaks from it drying. And we'll add in some highlights. I want to deepen up the blue to add more contrast between it and the pastels. So kind of the trick with grays is if you want it to stay a similar saturation, use a similar hued gray. So like blue is a cool color, so you can use a cool gray. Let's try layering that here. So this is where I would definitely reach for a much deeper color than what comes in this set. <laughs> Let's see if I can get away with this. Kind of use that in like the shadows too. Sometimes that's nice. Layer it back over again to regain some of that saturation with the original color. Interesting, interesting. Okay, this is the neutral one and add some shading. And I think I'll throw it up here since we're getting rid of the white. And we need a tail color. No, let's try Hollyhock. I kinda wanna try it. I just like the name of it, maybe. It's not as dark as it looks there. Oh, <laughs> it's not the same paper. Let me use this for like a little more shading. I'm just playing with it. <laughs> I'm actually kind of having a hard time using these. I mean, it's only the first time here, but maybe because of the lack of contrast. Oh, I like that better. So this is a warm gray going over that cool blue color. See how it's canceling it out a little. A problem I'm finding with these colors is that they are just so similar. They seem different on this paper, but on the paper I'm using, they're like becoming the same color over time. That's an interesting fact about alcohol markers if you are new to them, is that they are not light fast. So anytime the sun is hitting them, they will fade and there's nothing you can do about it. No expensive marker is going to fix that. It's the nature of the alcohol ink. 
doesn't have the kind of contrast that I would like to see. And the only way to fix that is to start bringing in some deeper tones from like, I think this is the 48 set of Ahu brush markers. So if I grab something like an aubergine, it's gonna be significantly darker than it will see. Maybe we have something a little lighter than that. Let's try this, it's called Pastel Violet. So let's see if by incorporating that into here, we can create some contrast. I wonder if I could add like a ZBrush stripe to this. We'll layer it again. Maybe something deeper than that? What about vivid purple? What does that look like? Vivid reddish purple? Lavender. Here we go. Maybe we just need a little texture in here. All right, do you see how that's just making it a little bit more of a punchier design? Let's try something else here. I'm gonna grab this guy again. We'll try and use a different tone. So this one's very cool. Let's try and make something that's a little bit warmer. We'll see if I can kind of get away with it without using my other set this time. Do nice hands on hips. Let's keep it simple. Maybe for the outfit, we'll uh, keep that pretty simple too. Shoulders. Feeling more big hair. I just want to draw big swooping shapes. Now that's some big hair. Mm -hmm. Kind of covers most of the face, but I feel like that's what adds to the charm. Some hands, thingies somewhere. Let's add a little hair band for more big lines coming out that way. A little princess sleeve. That looks cute. Guess we'll go with a nice little skirt. Maybe a little longer than I tend to draw. So for this one, I want to use a little bit more warm colors. I kind of want to use one of these vibrant oranges for hair. I think that would be really, really fun. Just lighten that up. And this time, I'm going to do line art last. See if I like that better. <laughs> so I think I want to use light prawn for the hair. And we'll just color in the hair shapes. Look how highlightery this is. Although I've noticed with the Ohus, they do seem to tone themselves down a little bit over time. This is where the brush nib comes in really handy. You could be pretty precise with it. There's a first layer down for that color. Try layering the light orange on this a little bit. Maybe we should dive into some of these, like this lipstick natural color. What does that look like on this paper specifically? I think the eyes are a little janky. Let me fix that. All right, let's go over that. Let's try this lipstick natural, maybe for the skin tone. Okay, we're not seeing a lot of contrast here. I feel like I'm being a little harsh because this is exactly what I've been looking for. <laughs> I think it's just as a set, it makes it a little weaker, but it's exactly what I'm looking for at the same time. Start adding in the liner. Grab that point two. This is working a little bit better than that one did. Just trace these shapes. First, I'm going to go on the outside and then maybe we'll add in some to the inside if I feel like it. Let's try, how about horizon green? Actually, wait, I want that lime green. It's like less saturated. There we go. I wonder if I could use ash rose for like shading the hair. Kind of just desaturating it. A lot, of, a lot of contrast there. So I'm having some like conflicting thoughts here. Well, I think it's a good set for adding pastels to your collection. I'm trying to decide if it makes sense as like a first purchase if you don't have markers. I'm leaning toward yes, because this is what I would have reached for in the earlier stages. We should add some blush, which we use. This might be a little tricky because these are a little lighter, so they might lift. I guess we should continue the green down here. Let's see how well I can like fill a large area without getting too streaky. That's another thing about like lighter colors is it's a lot easier to make it look streaky than with some of the darker colors, depending on the pigment, of course. So this is lime green when you layer it once, and this is lime green when you layer it a bunch of times. So that means we could probably use it to like create stripes here. Probably should draw in our hands. Maybe we just layer the lipstick natural color again. Layer it a couple times. Really deepen it up. A little shadow under the hair. Is that popping a little better? That actually is. I feel like the hair needs to go lighter. What I want is it to be lighter specifically around like where the skin is because I'm trying to make the skin one of the darker colors here. Not working quite as well where I've layered a darker color to add shading, but where it was just the prawn color, it's lifting really nice. Now I feel like this green could go a little darker. Next one. 
A little contrast. I'm gonna add a little something to this. It looks too plain. Ooh, everybody like bows? <laughs> it's like too centered to the point where it looks like it's trying to be on the center and it wasn't supposed to be. Maybe if I have this extra piece come down this way. I yeah, just like these little things. Little shadow by those as well. So you can tell even though they're like pastel colors, like they're not super pale. Like you can kind of see, this is so light. It's almost just pink paper. <laughs> These are the lightest Ohuhu markers you can get and they're still like not as light as Copic markers can go. And I think maybe that's what's kind of disappointing me. The smidgiest about this set is that there isn't like a variety of pastels. They're all the exact same value. So you can't really get contrast with them. Even the grays, it's almost like they have the exact same amount of pigment. You can't really get contrast that way. If you already have the brush marker set, then it works really well because now you have contrast because that was kind of the same problem that this set had was you didn't have a lot of contrast, but if you don't have these, then you don't have contrast. And if you don't have these, then you don't have contrast with this either. It's almost like you need to have both sets. Still makes sense though to get these first if you're scared about super saturated colors, but these are just my first impressions. Hmm? Should we try to use the blue pencil this time? Why don't we try to do just like a face, a nice big face. Change my mind. Big ears, big eyes. Draw some like less curly hair. Can I do bangs this time? Just like bangs. I won't, I won't. No, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try and paint this face with just blues. We got this blue gray color that's really light. And then we have this darker one that's called light blue. And so maybe we can like kind of flip between these and kind of shade the face. Don't think these ears might make it to the end, but I kind of want to just do the blushies. I'm gonna layer just with this color first. Blue gray, number two. So she's looking a little dead. So I'm thinking by adding in some more saturated blues, that might help. With markers, it's always nice to layer a few times. Then you don't really have to worry about it being streaky because I'm about to add some serious blush. Let's try light blue. I think that's the darkest one we've got. Color in the nose. So we can blend that out. I do the same thing with the cheeks. And blend it out. Stick the dark color where I want it and then I blend it out before it dries. Cause if you wait for it to dry, it ain't gonna blend as nice. You can kind of practice trying to get softer edges, which can be really tricky. I'm not the best at it, but I try sometimes. <laughs> Go inside the ear. Get a little more deepness under the eyes. Maybe she's a little tired like me. Still has a bit of a dead steel look to her, but that's the color choices. That's not anything else. Should I add a little line art to the nose maybe? I'll start there. There's a nose. Do you want to grab the bigger one, at least for this top eyelash? I just like to draw that really thick on the people. Make them roughly the same size. Because my white gel pen's not working. Try to remember to leave in the highlight. <laughs> Switch back to the smaller pen. More details. Extra little eyelash. Little mouth. Kind of comes together with the line art. It makes a very big difference. Especially if you use like a uh, nice color that like represents it a little bit better. This is obviously black. A purple can be fun. Or like with this one specifically, maybe something more blue. I also want to give her like a much deeper blue hair, which we do not have anything darker. I might grab my hoos. Let's see which one might work with this. Sky blue, we also have cloud blue, pesto blue, which I think I want something darker than that. Ooh, brilliant blue. I just wish it was a little less saturated. <laughs> we have cerulean blue. I think I'm gonna go with brilliant blue and I'm just gonna draw it in. No line art necessary. So this is from my Who set, not the pastel set. I'm actually gonna use a chisel first to get like the fine points of hair, like for over here. Um, grab the shape. This needs to be colored in too. See, layering it a couple times, you get it darker. That's another thing about darker colors is when you layer them twice, they actually get way darker than when you layer pastel colors more than once because they're darker. That probably went without saying, but that's your interesting tidbit for today. That'll be $5. Kind of like the roundness of the top of her head. Add some little extra strands, make it look more like hair. 
fill in these little gaps. Make them look a little bluer. We're going for the contrast. Full contrast. While that's not dry yet, let's go back to our darkest pastel blue that's from the pastel set. Lift the color and drag it here. Because if you can get it on the tip of your marker, you can see how it's bluer. With the brush. Do you see how you can get contrast when you mix the pastel sets with the darker set? That's kind of the point I was trying to make with that one. This is the light blue from the pastel set. I'm going to add some freckles and hopefully they show through. I vary the size of them. How fun is this? Finish up the liner here. Isn't that fun? See, that's kind of what I've been enjoying doing lately is more rendering. And I like that there's contrast there. But yeah, that was my first impressions of the new Pastel Uhu brush marker set. I do recommend them for like beginners, like I said. Well, for everything I mentioned basically, because you can build up the colors slower. If you're interested in any of the things that I mentioned, I will have them linked in the description. It's pretty exciting to have some more pastels in my collection. Only time will tell which ones I gravitate towards the most. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys all next week, and I hope you have a delicious evening full of waffles. Bye!